Yeah, hi everyone. Very good evening. Sorry. Uh, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes uh, for others to join. And if um, and then we will con we'll start with the session. Guys, till that time, I'm sharing uh, our social media platform link as well as community link and our event link. So where you can find our upcoming events. Also, I'm sharing our uh, YouTube channel link. So guys, go and subscribe our YouTube channel.
Yes, sir. If you can start the webinar, okay? Okay. Guys, good evening and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar uh, on Unify and Rule, a one-stop solution for data engineering and data science Microsoft Fabric. Myself, Archie this said, I'm your host for this webinar. Uh, if you have any queries and question related to this webinar, you can use chat window for that. I'm there to help out throughout the webinar. Moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor, that is Synergetics. Synergetics Learning is India's most distinguished learning company in IT technology. Uh, we are ready with our top class learning solution that can be made to fit every requirement in uh, every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expensive greenfield solution offering uh, that is persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution. Emerging technology solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architectic solution. And talking about our ETC community, so today webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in our emerging technology. You just need to follow our meetup group, which is a emerging technology community for all. Guys, you just need to install meetup app on your uh, device or on your phone and follow our communities. So you will be updated about our events, meetup, webinars and workshops. Then you have to follow code of conduct. Please note that no one is allowed to take a screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. Also, if you have any technical question related to the topic, you can use the chat box to ask your question. After this webinar end, if you want recording, simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, I already posted in chat box. So guys, go and subscribe our YouTube channel. Today's speaker for the webinar is Mansi Sane. Is an, uh, she is an IoT data analytics and ML consultant trainer associated with Synergetics. She is very capable and uh, consulted and experienced in training and skilling. She is also designing learning curriculums and mentoring professionally in various organizations. Mansi has played many roles and provided skilling solutions for multiple organizations. Agenda for this webinar, you will get an overview on the topic and more like what is analytics and all. Also, guys, I already posted the upcoming ATT webinar details. Uh, so interested participants can go and register themselves. Please note that register is, registration is mandatory to join the webinar. Make sure you follow us on a social media platform like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, for relevant update regarding our webinar, workshop, and more. Thank you, participants. Now I will. Now I will. Now I would like to hand over this mic to uh, our speaker, Mansi, ma'am. She will continue ahead. Yeah, Anji, thank you so much for the introduction and a very good evening to everyone. My name is Manasi Shahani and I will be conducting this webinar on Microsoft Fabric. So in May 2023, like this year itself, Microsoft, you know, came up with an amazing idea that is uh, Microsoft Fabric, okay, uh, which is a one-stop solution 
for all your data needs, all your analytical needs. Let me put it this way. So my I am a Microsoft certified trainer and I've been training in this particular domain. And as you know, technology emerges, we also, you know, evolve with it. So since I've been in the analytical domain for, you know, quite a few years now. So, you know, I always had this challenge, like, you know, uh, when I'm using um, a tool like Data Factory or I'm using Azure Log Storage or I'm using Synapse Analytics or any other analytical tool that is available on Azure platform. So for me, what the challenge would be is that, you know, their integration, uh, putting them together, interconnecting them, or for that matter, you know, um, you know, um, if I have to kind of then build an end to end solution using all of this, there would be lots of lots of challenges for me. OK, and with um, since all of them are different path solutions, OK, that is platform as a service. So what would happen? You know, every solution would require its own nitty gritties. Like I would need to go configure that solution, then move to the next solution, configure that solution again. So it is again like time consuming. It takes up a lot of uh, compute. So if you are well versed with the Azure background, so you know that every service that you create, you need to create a workspace, you need to create a compute, you know, allocate some compute that is the power, okay, based on which your entire service will run. Right, so that's when my, that's when Microsoft thought, okay, you know, there is a problem here. People are facing challenges that okay, they are finding it very difficult to interlink these solutions that we have come up. Okay, so why not do something where which they have already achieved? You know, using Microsoft um, uh, 365. Right, I'm pretty sure everyone uses M365. So what is M365 basically? It's just a software as a solution, right? It is a SaaS product where you get Microsoft Word, you get Microsoft Excel, you get Microsoft PowerPoint, you get Outlook. What are those? Those are nothing but different softwares, right? Different applications within one, uh, within one domain, within one sphere. Okay, right? so that's what Microsoft thought. Why can't we do the same thing using Microsoft Fabric? So in today's webinar, and uh, since there are not many participants in this webinar, so what we have decided is, and since it's the World Cup that is going on in India, and India is batting today. So we, whatever registrations we got, not all of them could join, but those have joined. Thank you so much for joining. I hope I can deliver the best to my limits. So we'll do one thing. We'll just cut short this webinar to a little half an hour early so that you all can just, you know, um, you all can just, um, I mean, you can just go enjoy the rest of the evening. OK, so coming back to this webinar that we have, this is the agenda that I plan or I intend to do. I will be talking about analytics. Okay, why do we need analytics and what is it? Everything. Okay, who? What are the use cases? Where is analytics used? Okay, then I briefly gave you all an idea of this particular challenge. That if you are using as your club, what are the challenges that you might face if you are deploying or creating any end-to-end -end analytical solution? Okay, and then of course. The uh, topic of today that is Microsoft Fabric and how you can, you know, how has this particular tool elevated uh, the way we see analytics? Okay, is what we will be focusing on. And towards the end, I would like to show uh, a demo, okay, just a trial, like how you can at least start using Microsoft Fabric. So I hope. Most of you all are familiar with the Azure cloud side, know how to use cloud, have worked on certain uh, Azure uh, technologies out there, and I will be talking about them shortly. So since we all know that today's time is nothing but data, right? Every organization, every person, okay, that is there, will require some data. Correct. It needs to needs data 
Like for example, like even my organization requires data. Where are we? What what kind of marketing strategies have we implemented? Where are we? Uh, what kind of campaigns did we do in this month? How much revenue did we generate out of those campaigns? All of that. What is this? That is there. It is nothing but information, right? This is nothing but data, and data just does not come from one source, right? It comes from a database. It comes from a file. It comes from social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn, YouTube, and it's not in one format, right? A social media platform where people are posting videos. It is not of the same format as your file or Word file, for that matter, or doc, doc file or a text file, or for that matter, even an Excel file. So there is these are what these are different for data formats. OK, so what happens is that this all data that is there, it comes from these different sources. It comes from IoT devices. IoT devices again collect data in the form of JSON. It is again a different format altogether, but they are all coming from different different places, right? So ultimately what is important is the data. So you're getting data from so many sources. You are transforming it. You're collecting it. But then what? What after that? What are you doing after that? What is the next step? I just can't keep the data and like, OK, I have the data. We can't just stop. We just don't stop there, right? We go ahead. We move ahead. And what do we do? Like, I have to do. I want to know why did my company make any profit this year? How will I come to know? Right? How will how will we come to know? We will analyze the data, or we will make the data talk, and that is done only through analytics. So I want to make the data talk. I want it to tell me, okay, you made a mistake here. This is what was the wrong decision that you took. You have to work on this, and the next year, the following year, I will try and overcome that particular problem using the analysis that I did. So analysis, if I have to do or if I have to do analytics. What is analytics? So analytics is. I will be covering all those questions. Just give me some time. Just I want to start with a brief introduction to this. So what is analytics? So analytics, like I said, is like, a you know, it's a magnifying glass. Let me tell you, it is something that will help you see things. It will. It is something that will help you get that information, find that information, find those insights, find those patterns, find those trends, which otherwise you've just collected data. It will not do anything to you, right? It is something that that you need in order to see different insights to your data, do get business intelligence out of it, right? And it is a process in which you can interpret the data and move it in the direction that you want to go in. Correct. So, for example, let's say if you are, you know, running a lemonade stand, you're running a, uh, you know, you are running a business and you want to use an analytics to figure out which product in the market is the most popular that you have launched. Like for us, we are a training, we are a learning solutions company. So we need to. You know, uh, find out trends. We need to find out um, uh, some. Uh, uh, we need to find out something that you know people are easily attracted to. Like which technology is the most popular? Is it cloud? Is it a programming language? Is it SharePoint? Is it Infra and Collab? Which technology is very is popular? So that's when analytics will help me. You know, um, help me make good decisions. Um, data and AI practices falling behind. How do I push it ahead? How do I create more presence of data and AI? So that's when analytics helps us. So analytics, you know, we need it for n number of reasons. I have listed those reasons, and the very first reason is to gain an insights. Okay, it will help you get customer behavior, market trends, business performance, and um, identify patterns, trends that you know that can be helpful or beneficial to make decisions. It will help you make improved decisions, learned decisions. It's not that you are making decisions just essay, you know, just randomly you're going out and making decisions. That's not going to be the case, right? Because you have data, you have the you know, understanding of the public based on that, you know, you can improve your data, 
you can improve your decisions sorry and so and you know take your business in that direction then third is that you can optimize performance so since you know uh, you can you know you have an insight to the data okay you can optimize the performance where you can improve like we did not do much sales or we did not do many trainings in the data and ai practice last year so this this is a chance for me to improve to see where i can improve how i can optimize this okay so for that we need analytics right and analytics is you know practically used in everyday life like even in your daily life you use analytics then of course if you want to be use analytics it will help you stay competitive and like i told you like things are you know changing so fast they are rapidly changing they are rapidly people technology is rapidly moving data that is being generated is getting generated at a very large i mean in not just in size but very uh, rapidly it is increasing okay and we always need to be ahead in that terms we need to be competitive if i have another learning solutions company doing much better business then what is the what is the point then how will i you know it will affect my business affect my profits how will i pay salaries everything is all interconnected right so if i have to stay ahead of the competition i have to be competitive i need to have analytics so companies can use this insight can use again everything here is interconnected so you can you so when you have data you just based on the data you can't do any uh, decisions you need to analyze that and for that you need uh, analytics background now um why i am going to use microsoft i mean since microsoft fabric is something that has been introduced by microsoft and azure cloud is also something that has been you introduced by microsoft i thought let me just talk about the data and analytics solutions that are already present on these on this particular cloud okay since um um we uh, i mean i have been using these services for a quite a few years okay i have all, like i mentioned even in the start i face a lot of problems when i have to interlink these services okay now let me give you a give me let me give you that scenario again but let's say i'm using the azure services so let's say i have data stored in a block storage i i want to move that data to a data warehouse and then on top of that data i want to do machine learning or i want to create reports or dashboards so what happens is is that first of all i need an azure subscription correct i will need to create a block storage store the data in the block storage okay and then once that is done learn how to get that data and store it to a data warehouse let's say synapse analytics so in order to do that i need to use synapse analytics or i can use um, azure data factory right so azure data factory again i need to go configure that data factory create a workspace by but in uh, azure luckily azure uh, data factory does not require us to configure any compute but still it is using some con compute and still we can do some modification to that compute so i need to do that then now once i've done that go to synapse analytics configure synapse analytics analytics create another total new uh, workspace for synapse analytics okay and again there again i have to create a new compute you know create a, another storage then finally go and interlink them like this so how many solutions am i using i'm using three solutions and again what is the problem interlinking them how do i connect one each one to the other right so this process okay is very time consuming is very difficult to manage is very uh, challenging at times and very you know um, irritating if one doesn't work then you have to do it go again do that again so that's why you know uh, microsoft fabric came into picture okay so these are just the list of 
solutions uh, and data and uh, data and analytics solutions that is already available on uh, Microsoft Fabric and people have been using it for years now. I, I'm assuming since you've joined this session, so I'm assuming you already have good knowledge of uh, how to use the Azure uh, cloud solutions. So these are some of the solutions that are there already. So like I remember I was doing one project uh, where my uh, mentor told me that, OK, uh, see, you you have a good knowledge of IoT. OK, you have worked with real time data. I want you to collect data from real time, OK, uh, which is streaming in nature. OK, and this I'm talking about, you know, before Fabric came into picture. OK, I'm talking about my experience over here. So I remember he told me, OK, you get data from the devices. OK, uh, he just gave me the list and he's like, OK, you get data from there. And now what I want you to do is whatever data you're getting okay, from these devices, I want you to create a dashboard out of that. Using Power BI. So I was like, OK, so I don't mind doing it. I'll do it. And then I went online, tried to search a lot of things. I was not getting it. I was really frazzled. How do I do it? How do I configure things? How I uh, and if you want to, you know, do Microsoft says, OK, you can connect IoT data directly to Microsoft uh, to Power BI. You need the Power BI premium license. So my source like not all of them are going to be able to get a premium license, right? You need you need to find a solution that captures data okay, uh, in real time and then uh, using that real time data, you show it on the dashboard, but only using Power BI. So I then did a lot of research. I came up, then he told me about something called as Delta tables and how does that capture streaming data and so on and so forth. But when I was doing that, you know, a project that was given to me, I really found it very challenging. You know, I had people who are not from the coding background or, you know, uh, or have never used Databricks. They will have to go learn Databricks. OK, and, uh, you know, first of all, in Databricks, what you have to do is you have to, you know, mount the storage account that you have created where your data is. OK, uh, there is a code for that. You need to use the special library DB utils and then you mount the storage in Databricks. You fetch the data, you extract the data, right? And then once that is done, you do you create Delta tables, OK, which cap again, you have to write code, use SQL language, use Python or PySpark over there because it or you can use Scala as well, whatever language you're comfortable with, OK? and once that is done, I had to install a connector and using that connector, I could then finally capture that data from um, uh, from the Delta tables and load it to Power BI. So for me, that process was really challenging. I was not able to at times, you know, uh, create Delta tables properly. Data was not getting captured correctly. Um, I had to configure IoT Hub in the Azure portal, uh, which ca captures the real-time data. Once that is done, send it to Azure Databricks. How does Azure Databricks capture Azure IoT data, uh, no, IoT Hub data? You know, all that was very challenging. But then later Microsoft got the same and I was hoping, you know, some tool that, you know, helps me do that. Brings everything on one platform and that's what Microsoft Fabric did. OK, so challenges again, the same thing I've been talking about, the same thing, the complexity, integration, even though they were on the same platform, even though they are on the same platform, it is very challenging to interlink all of them OK, and, you know, use those services. So if. Um, and of course, cost every service inside Azure okay, has different costs. Not all are on the same page. My storage requires different costs. Databricks requires or consumes different costs. Uh, Data factory consumes different costs. So that is also a factor that we need to keep in mind. This is also one of the challenges and people who are using free tier or people like me who are MCTs. 
okay um, they get a monthly benefit of 7000 rupees or 10000 rupees depending on the subscription that is there and within that i have to accommodate such heavy consuming uh, services and synapse is like it's the most, I mean, the uh, serverless and the dedicated pools that are there inside Synapse, they consume a lot of, lot of cost. So people will face challenges over there as well. And it's a very, very important factor. And then skills and expertise, like I said, people will need to study Databricks. People will need to learn how to code in Databricks. Okay. How to, first of all, get the data, learn the DB utils library, which I... I, I had to learn. OK, then once that is done, how what how does Delta data, Delta tables work or how does that feature work? How does Azure Data Factory work? So of course, you need to learn in fabric also. But apart from that, you need to worry about the compute. You need to worry about the cost. All those factors also play a crucial role over here. So instead of all of this, you know, Microsoft thought, OK, Let's put it into a one place. Let's put it in one at one location. And that's what Microsoft Fabric is here to do. And like I mentioned in the previous, I mentioned at the beginning, we all use Microsoft 365, right? We. We all use Microsoft 365. We have different solutions on it, different applications on it. So what we do, we just buy the Microsoft 365 license, E3, E5, whichever you want. You just buy that license and under that license, you can avail all those particular application. So it's the same concept. It's the exact same concept that Microsoft Fabric has adopted, but in terms of the analytical solution. So all these services that you see, whether it's Azure Databricks, it's Azure, uh, the Azure Databricks notebooks, okay, that are there, uh, or uh, for that matter, uh, Data Factory, Data Pipelines, Data Flows, uh, Synapse Analytics, okay, uh, then um, even machine learning, okay, through the notebooks, model training, everything, you know, it even for that matter, Power BI, okay, or uh, working with streaming data working with real time data, everything, okay, has been put onto one platform, has been given a given one single platform so that people need not worry about the background, need not worry what is that. I don't have to con configure the compute. I don't have to worry about the data, okay? Everything, I will just talk about it in some time, okay? So it's like a unified solution for all your analytical problems, okay? It covers every domain pertaining to the analytics side. So Microsoft Fabric is an all-in-one analytical service. It is a platform that, you know, uh, helps you with working with lots of uh, services, like how your Microsoft 365 is, where you can work with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, the same thing. Just think it in terms of analytics. You want to work with Data Factory, you want to work with Data Flows, you want to work with uh, Synapse Analytics, you want to work with a data warehouse that is nothing but Synapse Analytics. No worries. The integration, and the moment I show you the demo, everything will be clear. Every single thing will be clear. So just Hold on till then. It, this is the definition of Microsoft Fabric. So, you know, you don't have to worry about integrating them. Okay. Even your data is taken care of. Otherwise, like I said, data comes from various sources. Okay. E even in an organization, one single organization, HR department can store data in a database. Uh, some other marketing can store it just in an Excel file or on a block storage. So, the Storage from where data is coming, okay? And if I have to share this data with a data scientist, with a data analyst, I need to create copies and then share with them. So all that thing, all those things, okay, have been taken care by Fabric. So Fabric, you don't need to piece together different services from multiple vendors 
okay even if there are multiple ven vendors in uh, there or, or like third party solutions you want to integrate with you don't have to do that everything is available on microsoft fabric you through the saas approach that they have taken okay now coming to the microsoft fabric architecture so like i said you have to use microsoft 365 right you we all use microsoft 365 in order to use microsoft 365 we need to purchase something called as a license correct and um, generally uh, when you work in an organization the organization's responsibility is the the organization has a responsibility to purchase those licenses so that under it it can you know give people access to all the all the Uh, applications inside the Microsoft 365, correct? So similar to that, Microsoft Fabric also has something called has its own licenses. Okay, but before we get into Microsoft uh, licenses, Fabric licenses, I I want to talk about the architecture. So when we talk about the architecture, you can see like it is used for analytical purposes. for business intelligence so naturally you would need to have a organization id okay uh, without which you cannot work okay and within that we, I, i i don't know if you are familiar with power bi or not but in power bi we have this concept called as workspaces where i can share my report publish my reports um, and you know give access to people to uh uh you know to the workspace so that they can work on the workspace share whatever they have done to a common to a common place right so the same thing has been taken in microsoft fabric so microsoft fabric architecture if you see there is tenants there are capacities and to that to sorry there is tenant as a workspace and to that when you give capacities what is capacities what is workspaces everything i will tell you but just i just want to explain the uh, diagrams that are there so if you see here there are two illustrations okay that provide uh, two examples of two different organizations so each has their own subscription and uh, they are organized dip differently right so typically when companies organize their own subscription like by the licenses it kind of resembles in this architecture it is like let's say a uh, a retail company okay let's say they are two retail company and within that so let's say these are two retail companies and within that they have like they have bought so there will be a uh, somebody call as a tenant so what is a tenant so a tenant is nothing but who is having a um, it's basically an instance of this particular uh, organization okay it is nothing but a subscription microsoft fabric subscription okay like a license that you have so each tenant is tied to some domain system okay so you so every tenant so like my organization or let's say a retail company a that you see will is a tenant okay or, or to the microsoft fabric subscription okay is using microsoft fabric subscription okay then inside that tenant you buy capacities now what capacities or workloads that we say uh, in order to deploy or create microsoft fabric workloads so i will talk about what workloads in some time okay so that is what is a tenant over here this is a tenant and then you have certain capacities that is okay now within an organization we know that there is not just one department there are multiple departments right you have hr department you have in this case retail there is product there is price there is a uh, a region okay so there are multiple uh, departments inside or multiple people using the same this thing so like i told you microsoft 365 you have one domain name given to it Then right? your organization gives you one domain name. So under that, then what is changed is the name, and depending on that, ah, uh, depending on how many people are there in your organization, you allocate that many names within the within your 
capacity in within your tenant, right? So that's what basically capacity is. So capacity is something that resides inside the tenant. OK, it is something that determines how much resources I need to allocate in order to use Microsoft Fabric. So it is basically, let's say, uh, something that is critical when you are working with Microsoft Fabric. OK, and uh, it is something that is the power. OK, or when we like I told you, when you create a solution on Azure, you configure the compute, right? So this is the compute. This is what decides how much compute you require in order to create your Microsoft Fabric workloads. OK, so there is uh, there are lots of uh, capacities and SKUs. That is the stock keeping units uh, that are available. OK, uh, generally, uh, I've, uh, but depending on what license you have, you get the associated or oh, no, actually that license doesn't matter in this case. But yeah, you uh, you can create your own capacities and SKUs and it's a whole uh, new topic altogether. So that is what is the capacity in. So you have to decide. OK, but of course, the, the license also plays some part of the. Uh, if you don't have the appropriate license to use Microsoft Fabric, then you can't configure the capacity or the SKUs that you require. OK, so that is one thing. Then comes the workspace. So what is a workspace? It is something that resides within the capacities. OK, uh, it is something that is like a container okay, which holds all your fabric workloads, items, workloads or items. It's the same. So like I told you, you want to work with data factory. You want to work. Sorry, you want to work with data pipelines. You want to work with data flows. You want to work with Power BI. So they are a, you can put them inside a workspace. So a workspace will have its own capacity. OK, and inside that then you create the fabric items or work workloads that you want. So each fab, Microsoft Fabric user, similar to Power BI, if you have ever used, okay, has its own personal workspace called as My Workspace. Okay, so it can you can create more workspaces, enable people to uh, or give access to people within that workspace. Okay, create a workspace for your organization, share that workspace. So once we go to the demo part, I think it will be very much clear for you all. So this is what is the workspace. Then of course experience. There is an experience that is there. So what is experience? It is a collection of all these capabilities. OK, uh, like uh, as your Synapse data, uh, sorry, Synapse data warehouse, Synapse data engineering, data science, real time analysis, data factory, Power BI, all of that is nothing but the experience. So what you are experiencing, you which kind of uh, uh, service are you using is nothing but the experience. And whatever you create inside or you, you know, whatever limits or sorry, capabilities you have within the experience, that's the workloads is nothing but the items. So users can create, edit, okay, um, like data engineering, okay, you want to, so within, we will see that. So within data engineering, there are multiple items, okay, like you have a lake house, you have notebooks, you have Spark job. OK, there's Spark job definitions, which I will show you OK within that experience. So the experience name is Azure Synapse, sorry, Synapse Data Engineering. And within that you have your lake house, notebooks and n number of other uh, uh, workloads or yeah, items, which is which you can create or edit or delete. Whatever you want to do, you can do that. Now, like I said, you want to work with Microsoft Fabric. So you need a set of licenses. So um, the very first licenses that Microsoft Fabric has is the Microsoft uh, is pay as you go and Microsoft Fabric reserved instance. So this two licenses since since I think Microsoft uh, Fabric is still in public preview. OK, it's not, I think, completely released as of now. They were going to release it on 1st October, but I don't think so. They have done that. OK, uh, they were going to release these two softwares, uh, these two licenses as well. 
So this is the pay as you go. How if you want to use fabric, you pay, you use it similar to your uh, as your subscription that is there. Then is the reserved instance. So reserved instance, of course, you can reserve certain instances like the experience or the items that you want to. Then if you are using Power BI and you have a premium capacity license, OK, that also includes all these Microsoft Fabric uh, items, experiences that I talked about. OK, and you can use anything that you want of Microsoft Fabric by using the Power BI premium capacity generation to license. OK, then if you want to create your own, like I talked about capacities and SKUs in the previous uh, this thing. If you want to create your own, you can do that using the Azure portal and, and that is called as the ASQ. OK, so there is a list that is there. Like F2 starting from F2 and it goes on, I think, till f 204A. OK, you can go to your Azure portal and uh, just search in Microsoft Fabric and you can go there and create a capacity of your choice and once you have created a capacity of your choice you can that is called as the ace queue you can easily uh, then uh, start working with the fabric but not all things are included in this thing okay not all fabric experiences or uh, uh you know uh fabric items are included there's a restriction for that you can i uh, you can go online and see then you have is the my you have is the power bi free license i if you're worked with power bi we uh, when we first time go on to power bi and on the services site right we get a free trial that is of 60 days two months so if you have that okay you can still use our Microsoft Fabric, but now it is no longer called as uh, Power BI free. It has been replaced by Microsoft Fabric free. This is the name now it has become. So uh, now you might be thinking what happened to the Power BI licenses, the other licenses that are there. OK, so it's not gone. It's totally there. OK, and it is something uh, that you can still use. OK, so the other two licenses, that is the pro license. So if you are a pro license user already are using pro license like me, OK, uh, fabric comes over there. Uh, it is totally available to you, but uh, you will need. But it will be depends. You will have to configure the capacity based on pro trial or premium. I will show you that, OK? Uh, then the other is the premium per user, that is the PPU license of Power BI. It does not include all uh, uh, the fabric capacities, okay? But you can, I mean, it is completely there, okay? So, yeah, one more important point is that these two licenses that you see are almost the same. These have not been yet released, okay, still, but if in case Microsoft Fabric Reserved Instance is released, OK, uh, it is equivalent to your Power BI premium capacity. So if you have Power BI premium capacity license, don't worry, all your Fabric experiences items are covered and you can use Fabric. Uh, you can use Fabric for your analytics purposes. OK, so this was about the licenses, but the most important uh, service that Microsoft Fabric kind of overcame is the Microsoft Fabrics one link. So I told you in the beginning, right? you know, when you have to share data within your organization to a data analyst, to a data scientist, you generally tend to make a lot of copies of that data. OK, do you need to store it in their database? You need to first of all share it with them, store it in their database. Again, the format is different. OK, whatever data you have shared is different and what format they might be requir requiring is different, right? So. So what did Microsoft say? OK, I want to even overcome this challenge. I don't want, you know, uh, this to be a hassle in uh, or a hurdle for people to, you know, configure their analytic services. So what did Microsoft Fabric do? It's like, OK, I will 
you know people have been using onedrive where they upload all everything on there no matter what type of the format is like you know you upload word files you upload powerpoint presentations you even up upload videos you upload text files okay you don't worry about the type of the format right when you are uploading to a onedrive link correct you upload images videos etc so why can't we do that do the same thing with our data is what microsoft fabric thought so let's put all that data into one format let's let's just say okay you don't have to make multiple copies of that format instead what you do i'll make one storage i will make one copy of that data and whoever wants to work with that data can work whether you are a data engineer you're a data scientist you're a data analyst no worries you just use that one copy of that data okay and you use it anywhere so what it has done it has by default microsoft fabric has by default decided the format of that data that will be available and it has said okay all the format that i will use is the delta paraquet format Delta paraquet format. So it's like, okay, whether you're working with a data warehouse, you're working with a data lake for that matter, or you're working with for real time, you're working with Kustro database. Okay, no worries. You're working with file, no worries. You're working with delta tables, no worries. All the format will be of the delta paraquet, this thing. So because of that, now what has happened? Even your data has become unified, it has come to one. You know, it has become one part. It has become one uh, this thing. So you don't end up making multiple copies. You don't end up, you know, uh, there is um, there can be a unified governance that can be applied data governance on top of this. So your data is much more secured. You don't have to configure, you know, security for every experience in fabric. Every, you know, like uh, when we work on Azure portal or you use Azure solutions, every uh, uh, Service on top of that requires different configuration in terms of security as well. Right? You need to configure different security on top of that. So if you don't want that, okay, what Microsoft does it, it has done is that okay, put everything on one platform. Let it one let that one particular format be the same for all. Okay, like how OneDrive has done it. So that's what the fabric one lake has achieved. And trust me, this is the most this is like the heart of Microsoft Fabric, okay? And this is the centric architecture if you're working with the data, okay? So like I said, whether you're a data analyst, data engineer, data scientist, or even a DBA, that is a database administrator, okay? You, you don't have to worry about copying the data, configuring security for it, okay? Uh, you know, uh, uh, then worry about on what top of, you know, on which engine, like on what kind of a compute will this data be working? You don't have to worry about that because Microsoft Fabric has said, okay, I want everything at the same level. All my data has to be in Delta Paraquet format. All the compute has to be one. Security, one. So because of that, okay, one, because of this one leak feature that Microsoft Fabric has adapted, integration has become faster people can you know uh, work on the analytics they don't have to worry about configuring or copying the data uh, and you know it eliminates the need to move copy data between different systems and teams and like i said if a data scientist is using synapse or is using a spark engine okay whereas your um, Whereas uh, somebody else uh, from your department is not using that. It is you, he or she is using some other engine. Okay. So if I have to, uh, you know, make the data compatible, I need to change the format. Right. So here you don't have to do any of that. You make one copy of that data, which works only on one compute. Okay. So one copy is the key of, is a very important feature in this one lake. 
and it allows you to read data from a single copy. OK, then <laughs> security, like I said, it is coming up. It's not there that has come up, but. Yeah, so it is coming up, but it is very important. And of course, like I said, you need to configure security for different different services here. You don't have to worry because the data is at one location. So how much time are you going to require, you know, to uh, configure that? I mean, configure the security. So for the reasons as to why one should use Microsoft Fabric or one lake, OK, is that there is only one place where you can store your data. The entire organization's data, OK, you can store it at one place. So consider a scenario like prior to one lake. OK, it was easier for customer, you know, or let's say I give you an example like, you know, at times, you need to work with, let's say, data lake, or you need to work with data warehouse, or you need to work with a database. So it becomes very challenging at times. You need to have three different services deployed for that. So instead of doing that, what Microsoft Fabric is there, okay, you want to use a lake house, you want to use lake, data lake, no worries, use it. You want to use a data warehouse, change this feature, it is a data warehouse. You want to use Database, change this feature. You want to write queries, change this feature, write queries, and you can start using it as a database. So this is what has one lake done. It has brought in, you know, it has unified that data into a lake, into one lake. The name is the same, but it is brought it into a single place. So it removes, you know, the challenges of improving collaboration, okay, by bringing it, it to one place. Clear. Then the second um, in, uh, second feature as to why one link, okay, is that I told is that I told you uh, about the tenant, right? It's a unique benefit that is there in this particular uh, uh, Microsoft Fabric. So knowing what, or let's say knowing what your customer uh, organize, uh, like um, like how much you should, uh, if you know what is the boundary or you know what is uh, up till where I can take my data I have up till where can I apply a governance and compliance boundary okay Al ultimately decided by the tenant right even in Microsoft 365 you don't have the access to a lot of things okay you just have access to these things because the admin has decided not to give you the entire control so if you want to configure that the same thing in Microsoft Fabric that is done through the one lake feature. So you, so if you are the admin of that tenant or of that license or of that subscription, okay, what will happen is you can control till where people can access the data. You govern the data, okay, till where or till how much you want to give the data. You set the boundaries. OK, this is for this tenant. I just want this much information to be released for this tenant. I want to be you know, releasing only this much information. So what does it do? It helps you. Uh, you know, prevent any other uh, distribution or you know anyone contributing to your. Or uh, to that data. OK, so when you're creating workspace, OK, which I'll show you, you create, you can create different parts within that. I mean, in that organization, you can create different, different workspaces for sales department. I'll create one workspace for HR department. I'll create one workspace and accordingly you decide the access policies. You decide the ownership rights. So this is what is meant by governed by default. OK, it is governed. It is up to you. OK, and each workspace. Uh, that you that you are going to create is kind of tied up with a specific region, depending on the capacity, depending on the uh, yeah, depending on the capacity and the license that you have. OK, so how much of a capabilities are there in that particular workspace? You allocate or you can access items. So it's similar to, you know, how Office works like Word, Excel in PowerPoint, right? You don't get the full access, right? You, you you get only read access or something that is configured by the owner of that one drive. So it's the same thing with my fabric. So you have lake houses, you have warehouses and other items. 
So if you don't, if you don't want that person to, you know, convert it or use it as a data warehouse. Totally fine. You could tailor it and change that except change that view for that person. Then the other, why should one use Microsoft uh, one layer or why is it there? Is that because it is open at every level. So you, since I told you it is, so it's a lake basically. So it's, you know, built on a, on a pre-existing service of Azure that is the Azure data lake storage. Okay, so one lake, so and and we all know that a data lake is something that captures raw data. It does not see the format of the data, right? Whether it's structured, unstructured, semi-structured, doesn't matter. It everything is dumped in the lake, right? So on using that similar concept, okay, Microsoft Fabric has made it open at all level, and like I said before, that. My, Microsoft Fabric has decided one format, and that is the Delta Paraquet format. Whatever format you put, it will all be converted to what? It will be converted to a Delta Paraquet format. Okay, so if if a data engineer loads data into a lake, a lake house using Spark, okay, and a SQL developer, okay, who wants to use C SQL, okay, he can use that with a seamless trans transformation, okay, from a lake house to a data warehouse clear so this is what is uh, uh, open at every level not just that it also helps you address okay or helps you access as your data bricks as your hd insight okay as your data lake storage on top of which it is built okay so all those formats are entertained in a one lane. So you want to connect to a data breaks, you want to connect to a HD inside, no worries, you want to get data from there, you can simply get it. But the format in which it will be, it will be a Delta Paraquet format. Then another reason is that uh, you can use it on your Windows operating system on your desktop. Okay, it's like Similar, I don't know if you have ever used Storage Explorer. So if anyone has uploaded data on one lake and one lake, like I said, is a SaaS solution. So everything is going to be online, right? So what will happen is if you want to download it to your personal laptop, you can do that using the one lake file explorer. Okay, then the other thing, the other uh, uh, example is that you can make one copy of your data, like I said. Okay. And how is that done? With an important feature, like if one leg is the heart, then shortcut is like, you know, the brain behind it. So one leg, sorry, shortcut is the most critical part in that. And this is what ensures that you have one copy of data. You can even get data from Azure uh, sorry, from Amazon Red, uh, Amazon S3 storage. No worries. It will again make one copy of that data. So you can see even third-party in integration is possible. It's not just Azure. You can even use third-party integrations, get data from Amazon uh, as well. Why? Because of this shortcut feature that is there. So, you know, it's like a link, like a connection link that is there, uh, that is maintained and, you know, without actually you know make getting that data it kind of creates a link between your data source and microsoft fabric and starts using the data so they are like a symbolic link that is there and these shortcuts are, are the most amazing feature that microsoft fabric has launched okay so here you can see this is one compute and one place where all your data is being stored so inside you can then segregate into workspace okay workspace a workspace b who to give what access it's totally up to you so if you want to work with fabric okay no worries you can use your existing uh, power bi so if you are you are already a power bi user you have pro premium licenses everything in power bi in that will be covered Okay, uh, all of the, all that uh, uh, license can be used in order to work with uh, fabric, but you need to, you know, create a, you need to assign a capacity to it. Like I said, you cannot work without it. So you need to purchase a capacity, but if you can't, 
okay uh, you can go for a trial period that is called as the trial capacity okay so i'll just show it to you all i'll um, show how it is done i'll show where you can go and do it yeah so this is the link where you can go and access your microsoft fabric it is app.fabric.microsoft.com just click on that Okay, here, like I said, you need your own organizational ID. So I'm entering my organizational ID. It is similar to your Power BI. Okay, uh, you need to have that. Okay, so I'm just going to say submit. And now, it though it shows Power BI, it is, it, you can easily navigate to your, to Microsoft Fabric. So Microsoft Fabric has, like I said, many, uh experiences okay so there are in total seven experiences one is the power bi experience then you have data factory similar to your azure data factory then you have something called as data activator earlier it was in preview when i was working now it has been completely launched so it's something that will give you alerts something like a monitoring tool okay uh, not monitoring actually give you alerts triggers okay all it's going to be all automated okay all that will be uh, kind of uh, yeah you can even do mod monitoring of your uh, action of your microsoft fabric environment that is also possible. That is the data activator. You have Synapse data engineering. Okay. So if you have experience, somebody asked me in the in the chat box that you know is this um uh, why choose fabric over data breaks in simple terms is fabric. So you can see here, okay. You I using this particular uh Okay, or I'll just do one thing. I'll just show you a demo. How to how is it simpler compared to Databricks? Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is first I am gonna go into one of these experiences. So, like you saw, I have chosen the Synapse Data Experience, and inside that there are different items. That is a lake house, notebook, Spark job definition, data pipeline, notebook. Okay, so these are all the items within the uh, experience in within this experience. So before we start doing a lab, I just want to create a workspace. Okay, so for that, I'll come to workspaces, just say new, and I'll put in a name, say webinar. And now I will apply some uh, capacity. So this is the capacity if you can purchase these then go ahead but by default i'm using a trial capacity and this will have a limitation of 60 days okay so but i since i have a pro power bi license so i don't need to uh you know i i don't need to use trial or this thing but whenever you start with a new experience you need to assign a capacity and this is what is the capacity so i'm just going to say apply so i've given it so this symbol the diamond symbol that you see this indicates that this is a fabric capacity or a fabric works or a workspace with fabric capabilities okay so now let's start so here if you click on new here you can see all the options on one single place. You want to work with data pipelines. You want to work with, uh, you know, notebooks. You want to work with, you want to put in your data. Okay. You want to work with real-time analytics. All of that you can create within this workspace that is there. So though I have selected data engineering, not needed you can easily navigate to any of the experiences that you want so for now we are going to see how to create a simple lake house okay so what is a lake house a lake house is like the place where you actually store the data okay uh, so lake house basically is the place where you store data and when you create a lake house so i'm just going to say webinar we will give it a name webinar lake house Okay, and click on create.
So lake house is basically built on top of one lake. Okay. And it is where actually you put in your data. So here you get two options to load the data. Either you load data from a file or you load it to a table. But you, as a starter, you should go with files. So click on these three dots. I'm going to say upload files. Now I have an option to browse. So I can browse from my local, so from my desktop. Okay, so I'm just going to go with. Sales, they open. So when we create a lake house, like I said, lake house is nothing but where you store data and it is built on top of one lake. Okay, there are three things that are created when you create a lake house. Okay, so let's just, okay, this data has been loaded. So if I want to view this data, so just refresh it. So click on this. You can see this data has been uploaded. So when we, like I said, when we talk about lake house, okay, uh, there are three things that a lake that is by default created in a lake house. Okay, one is the data set. One is a data set. So let's say you want to create reports, you want to create dashboards using Power BI. Okay. That's when this lake data data set comes into picture. Okay, that's when you can use this data set. Then the third thing is, of course, by default, lake house is also created. And the third thing that is created is the SQL endpoint. So this is the most important feature. This is, like I said, you want to work with lake house, you can use, or you want to work with data lake, you use the lake house. But if you want to switch, you want to work with data warehouse, this is what will help you do it. So SQL endpoint is the one that will help you work with a data warehouse. Apart from that, you can even create a separate data warehouse that is an altogether new experience. So I'm not going to talk about it. There's a difference between the two. I don't want to waste much time in that. But yeah, this is where you will you can create a data warehouse, write queries, and create visuals on top of that. Okay, so our data has been uploaded in the warehouse, sorry, in the lake house. So now it's up to you what you want to do. You can come in here, open a notebook, okay? Or like I said, you want to create a table out of a file, okay? There is a simple, uh, simple, this thing called as load to tables. So this symbol that you see by default, it indicates that it will convert it to a delta table okay so just by clicking on this what will happen it will automatically okay why did this fail the same mode It's not recognizing the columns. So what I will do is I'll upload a new layer. What I can do is just give me a minute. I think there's some problem with the data. Just a second.
Let's just see now. Let's upload it again and let's see. Okay, now it has worked. I think there was some problem with the data. So that is why it was not working. Yeah, so now it is working fine. So now you can see like a table, it has been created over here. Okay, it has successfully loaded into that. Now, like I said, this is your lake house. Okay, this is where you or your data lake that you can work with. But now let's say you want to query the data. Okay, what you can do is simply come here and change this from files and folders to a SQL endpoint, which will become your kind of a data warehouse, okay? So you can work, so you know, with just clicking on this, with such simplicity, you can just change and go back, okay? You want to query the data, just come in and start querying. So I'm just going to write a new SQL query. I already have a query written, so let me just copy that because it's for demo purpose, so I did not want to, you know, Okay, so I've written a query. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to run it. So now you can see it has given me the output. Okay, similarly, like if you want to work with a notebook, you can do that. Just go back to Lakehouse. Just say open a new notebook. So by default, it will convert by picking up the file. Okay, it will, uh, yeah. So what you can now do is you can just say over here, just say load to Spark. So Microsoft Fabric by default, okay, I just want to show you. Uh, yes, settings. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, I can't find that, but by default, Microsoft Fabric okay uses uh, the Spark engine. Okay, uh, that is there. It I can't just find that link right now, but yeah, it uses a Spark engine in order to work uh, with uh, all these with anything that you want. So basically, like Synapse. OK, so now if you want to load this to Spark, you just click on this and by clicking on this, I will get a data frame created. You can see how easy it is, whereas if I had to work in Databricks, I had to learn the dbutils library. I had to learn how to mount the storage, get the data from storage, OK, because Databricks doesn't have its own storage. OK, you need to mount the storage onto the Databricks, onto the notebooks of Databricks and then get it. Your I simply just upload it in the files, convert it to a Delta table and just by clicking on load data to Spark, I could get a data frame created. So when I run this, this particular cell, it will display a data frame or from a file to a data frame. OK, this is how easy Microsoft Fabric has done it.
So it will take some time to start the session and everything. But once that is done, you can just see the output. So here you can see it has created a data frame and then you can do whatever you want on to this. You can do machine learning. You can do uh, data analysis using uh, notebooks. If you know Python coding, PySpark coding, you can totally then do using this particular notebook. So you can see how easy it has made, right? How comfortably you can, you know, uh, switch to certain things. I didn't configure any compute here. I didn't do any, uh, you know, uh, create any storage. What I had to do, I had to just create a lake house, upload the data, choose what kind of a format I want, whether I want it in files, I want it in tables. By default, the table format you can see is Delta. OK, and then I can run a notebook on top of it. I can even do. Uh, I can do anything that is pertaining to a uh, data factory. OK, so if I have to do that, I'll just switch to a fabric workspace that I already have. So here, if you see, I can do a simple copy activity as well. OK, I can get data from external sources like block storage, data lake, Amazon from uh, anything. You name it and you can get the data. So it's simple like how your um, data factory works exactly the same way. Absolutely same way. So if I have another like uh, pipeline. OK. So like if you want to do copy activity, you want to copy data from block storage instead of, you know, uh, cop like how I uploaded data from the uh, from my laptop. If you don't want to do that, you can use the data factory and upload uh, you know, or copy the uh, copy your file from a block storage, okay, and upload it to your lake house. So it's the same way as your data factory works. It's exactly the same way. Clear? Now, like I told you, you can create reports. So you already saw how you could create, okay, uh, write queries. OK, so this becomes like a database or a data warehouse. On top of that, you can write report, write queries, complex queries, OK, using this no new SQL query tab. But now let's say you want to create a report, so you can just simply you know, come to new visual query, OK, and drag the tables that you want. So I'm just dragging this particular thing. And then write measures, create measures. OK, inside that you can do whatever you want to data modeling. OK, like how you would use our query editor the same way you can use it over here. Exactly the same way. OK, you can go mod, you can do app and queries, merge queries, all of that. Just come here, add a thing so you can see how you would use Power Query Editor the same way you can use it over here. Exactly the same way. OK, so this is called as a visual query. Now you can even create a report. So you have a feature that is new report. So what happens by default, it opens in a new tab. OK, and the the data set, if you recall that we had loaded, OK, will be automatically loaded over here. So here, similar to your Power BI, can you see it is exactly the same thing? I can create a report inside this. So let's say I, I can use a table visual and I am going to add, let's say table visual. OK, I'm going to add item and I am going to add let's say quantity. OK, so the same way how your. Let's just expand this. OK, so this is the same way how you create reports in Power BI. OK, you can come in over here. You can add a measure if you know how to write measures in Power BI. You can do that. Come in, add a measure. 
okay and just come here and refresh the screen automatically on the right hand side where your data is you can see the measure being added in power bi if you recall you can even do modeling so if you come to your data warehouse can you see there's a model tab so just click on this and you know you can simply do modeling if there are more than one table is there you can just uh, create primary keys, foreign keys, do that and do data modeling over here, create fact tables, create dimension tables, etc. Okay, that is totally possible. Then you can add another visual as well. So I'll just go for this. Just expand this and to that, I will add uh, on the Y axis item. And on the X axis, I'll add unit price. Okay, so something like this will be created. Oh, one second. I have taken 100%. Oh, okay. You can go for this. Something like this will be seen. And then once you have created this report, what you have to do is you have to just save it. Come here, save as. Give it a name. So I'm just going to say sales report. And can you see it is going to the same destination where we want, where all our other power, I mean, other services are there. Right? It is going to that same destination. Correct. So that's what we will do. And once I click on save, it has been saved. Okay. You can create a dashboard out of it pin it to a dashboard the same way you do with power bi services so here you can see i created a report from scratch right you can do that totally using this now you can shut this if you come here and refresh now you can see the sales report being created here you can pin it you can create a dashboard so just use the pin symbol as a new the sales pin. Okay. Pin this as well. And now, if you go back to your this thing, can you now if I do, yeah, can you see there's a dashboard created? So just, just click on this and you'll see a dashboard there. Okay, you can just expand this and you'll get all the output. Is this clear? So you saw how easily I did. Did you see me configuring compute anywhere? See me configuring data, you know, putting data again, copying the data again. The uh, service has changed. I need to copy the data. Nowhere I did it. With just one place, that is your lake house inside this. Okay. And because it by default creates three things, that is the data set that you can use for creating um, Power BI reports. Then the third thing, I mean, the second thing is the SQL endpoint, which helps you write queries, okay? SQL queries, and finally is the lake house. You want to work with notebooks, you want to write models, okay? You want to work with delta tables, you want to work with data frames. No worries, you can do that. You can even get data from uh, over here from any other source like, uh, like you have copied data from a you want to get data from a data pipeline. Okay, like I did it for block to lake, lake house. You can totally do that. So this is what is basically Microsoft Fabric. There is nothing else in it. Like I can, you can, like I, I when I was working with it, I loved this particular thing. I could do so many things. Okay, so here you could see, I could even work with a data flow. Okay, which is similar to your Power Query Editor. Okay, similar to that. So the term for it, that is why the name is Data Flow Gen 2 and not Data Flow. It is different from what you see in uh, Azure Data Factory, but this is something different. Okay, so I had, I could interconnect this, get data from this. Um, okay. Create a schema, create a data warehouse over here. Okay.
So this is uh, okay. Alterex is something that I have heard new. Okay, uh, I have no idea about that. If you have, I mean, it might be similar to it. I don't know, but this is how easily you can, you know, use uh, Power BI, uh, use uh, Microsoft Fabric. Just go to one workspace, and you have everything inside it. Okay, so this is it, guys. There is not much. Okay, apart from that, uh, like I told you, there are different components that uh, Microsoft Fabric has. There you have data engineering, you have data science, you have data uh, uh, synapse and uh, da synapse data engineering, and so on and so forth. Right. So all all is under one umbrella. Okay. So that's what we saw. Okay. So data engineering has these uh has these uh items inside it you want to work with lake house notebooks <laughs> then data factory has two items that is data flows and data uh, pipelines <clears throat> it is exactly the same as your data factory then data science you want to create models you want to uh, deploy those models all those things are available over here. <laughs> then data warehousing. Okay, create warehouses. Okay, which helps you write SQL queries. The same thing. And of course, apart from that, you can even do real time analytics using the Custo query databases, Custo query, query set. Okay, KQL. And you can even use event stream. OK, uh, you need you can connect it to your event hub or something and, you know, uh, you can do uh, even that. Then Power BI, which you saw, you could create reports, you could have a, you know, everything you did online, you didn't have to go create, go to the desktop and do it. So area of use, it has analytics. It is an analytics tool, so it can have a widespread of area. Right, it is possible in every domain which requires analytics, and everything now is under one umbrella. It's on one, it's at one level. So you know you don't have to worry about um, you know getting data from here, doing this, switching to this tab, and so on and so forth. The integration has now become seamless. Okay, so we just saw the example. We just saw this how you can create one. So uh, since throughout my session, I have been doing a comparison between the two and I'm pretty sure this is clear up till now. Okay, what is the traditional analytical system? Separate tools for ETL, separate tools for data warehousing, separate tool for report visualization, all of that and like, it leads to complex complexity and of, you know, our, uh, the technical term for it is called as data silos. OK, so it often leads to that. So that's what Microsoft Fabric has kind of overcome OK, and helps you. You don't have to worry about scaling. You don't have to worry about compute, worry about the resources that are required in order to manage these system. Everything is taken care by the license and the capacities that you buy. OK, then, like I said, use cases is the same as where you can use them. OK, so that's it. Uh, this is actually more or less about Power Microsoft Fabric. There is not much in it. Okay, uh, we this is uh, all that is there in uh, Microsoft Fabric. And yeah, thank you so much, guys, that you attended this session. Um, I I know it is there are very few participants, but I try to incorporate all the things. And since it's a, only a webinar, okay. Uh, I, I wanted to keep it short and sweet, so I hope at least some uh, insight you might have got. Of course, there's lots to do in Microsoft Fabric. This is not the end, okay? And um, lots of things to explore. Thank you for joining this webinar, and uh, have a have a wonderful evening. Thanks to our speaker for the wonderful webinar.
Guys, I already shared feedback form. Please fill this feedback form. 